What's up, everybody? Jaron Fritz, aka Frizz Visuals. I'm the creative director for Colorado State Athletics with multiple years of professional sports and photography experience. And today, we're diving into one of Photoshop's most underrated tools, the threshold adjustment layer. It's clean, powerful, and way more useful than sports designers give it credit for. I'll show you how it works, where it shines, and how to implement it into your design workflow without having to change up your whole style. So if you're looking to level up your sports visuals, stick around to the end of the video. And if you're into tips like this every single week, make sure to hit that sub button so you don't miss the next one. There are tons of threshold tutorials out there, but most go way too deep. We're keeping it simple, sports focused, and something you can use right away. So first, let's talk about how threshold works. I threw in this image from our orange out game for a reason, which I'll get to later in the video. But when I head down to the adjustment layers and hit threshold, it drops this chaotic black and white mess on top of the photo. And yeah, you're probably thinking about checking me into the nearest padded room facility because this looks insane but hear me out. It takes any picture and converts it into a one bit image of pure black and white based entirely on contrast. No grays or gradients, think screen printing, but in Photoshop. You will get one tool for adjustment, which is the threshold slider, and that will change its tolerance to light. Drag it to the right and only the brightest highlights remain, but pull it to the left and it allows for more midtones to hop up in the mix. But before we get into the first use case, a couple quick tips. When working with a subject like a player, I recommend masking them out first. If you're planning to threshold the background too, treat that separately, so in this case we're just going to mask out Neek. Second, you'll want to apply a player treatment beforehand to really boost the contrast and detail. Threshold responds way better to a high contrast image. And lucky for you, I've got an entire video breaking down my player treatment process. I'll drop that link at the top of the description below. And the last tip before I spill all the secret sauce is you can use masks to refine the threshold. So taking a look, we got our isolated player with the treatment applied. And when we throw on the threshold layer, you'll notice some of the areas get super dark while others blow out completely, especially down in the shoes. If we try to pull some of that detail back into the shoes by dragging the slider to the right, we recover that area, but we also start losing detail everywhere else. The player starts melting into a black void. We can refine this selection by simply masking out only the shoes. The greatest part about threshold is you don't have to be incredibly precise because now that we have a threshold layer covering just the shoes when we add additional threshold layers no matter how much you manipulate it it will not affect the previous threshold layer we have on the shoes beneath it so what this does is it allows you to stack multiple thresholds at varying values to create a more even one bit version of your subject so as you can see while i'm workshopping this we are creating a very even image You've seen a sneak peek of the sauce, and now here's the first way to really cook with it. One color player stamps. A real world sports design example is this marketing poster I created for our state of Colorado pride game. We swapped our usual color scheme for the state flag palette and I wanted those bold colors to take center stage within the design. To make that happen, I use an overlapping one color player stamp right in the middle. It's clean, fully driven by the colors of Colorado, which is exactly what we wanted this to convey. So let's talk about that double Bowen stamp we got going on up in the middle. This is the cleanest, most plug and play way to start using threshold in your designs and we have actually already done all of the legwork for it. Just go through that same process I showed earlier. Drop on a threshold layer, tweak it to your liking, and use masks if need be to refine certain areas. So once you have your subject where you want them, just make sure they are on a pure white background. We're going to create a new layer, then go up and click select, then color range. This menu will pop up. Make sure you are on the eyedropper tool with a fuzziness of 40. Since we're working with just two distinct colors, black and white, it's super easy to swap the black for any color that you want using this selection method. So you will hover the eyedropper tool over the black area, click it, then hit OK. Once you bounce up out of that menu, you will see that all the black area is selected. So on the new layer you just created, you can pick and choose whatever color you want this to be. In our case, we're gonna go with our Aggie throwback green, which when we hit select and use hotkey G to equip the paint bucket, and then on that new layer we created beforehand, we are going to fill that selected area. You now have a one color player stamp that can be used as is or manipulated in several ways. You can first change the color of certain areas and since this is from our orange out game, let's just make his jersey orange. You will click on your new stamp layer and create a new layer above it. You will then select the new layer, right click, 
and select Create Clipping Mask. Now you can grab the brush tool with your new color and just paint right over it. Since it's set up as a clipping mask, the color will only appear on the pixels from the layer below, so you don't need to be extremely precise. As we zoom out, you can see we have now only made the jersey orange where the rest of the image remains green. Another way we can mess with the one color stamp option is by making what I'd personally call color blocks. Jumping back into the State Pride graphic, you can see the main stamp is blue, but over the blue section and the stamp turns to white. This is also extremely easy to replicate, so jumping back into our Photoshop file, we have the all green stamp. I will throw a green box underneath purely to showcase what I'm talking about. You will next want to select the pixels of that box, create a layer above the stamp, and fill it with your other color. Same technique as before with the jersey, we're creating a clipping mask to lock color onto the player stamp below. Now for this particular size and color scheme, I probably wouldn't use that method here, but if you think back to the state pride graphic, that is where this makes sense. Don't get it twisted. If you thought the one color player stamp was cool, but some applications seem pretty niche, don't tap out yet because this next technique is where things get taken to a whole nother level. We are going one step further because Threshold isn't just limited to single color stamps, we are going to build out a multi-color screen print. With stamps, you are using one to two colors, but look at how elevated these graphics are when you introduce a third color. Just like the steps before, this isn't some overly complex method, so once you get the flow down and understand how it all connects, you're about to really start picking it up. The goal with a threshold screen print is to break the image into three distinct lighting zones, highlights, midtones, and shadows. Each one will be assigned its own color, giving you a layered, stylized look that feels like it's a real screen print. For this example, we're going with white for the highlights, orange for the midtones, and green for the shadows. But before we start tossing colors around, we need to isolate at least the highlights and midtones first. So jumping back into Photoshop, we've got our original cutout and treated player ready to go. First, we're hunting for those highlights. Start by hiding the solid white layer underneath, then drop a threshold adjustment layer. Since we are trying to isolate the brightest part of the image, we will mess with the tolerance level of the slider. We're really aiming for those brightest hits, so as you slide the slider, you start to see the player get darker. That means we're zeroing in on the higher end of the highlight range Range, which is exactly what we want. Once you feel as if you have selected the brightest parts, go ahead and create a new layer, go select, color range. Instead of selecting the blacks like we did before, we are going to click on the whites, then hit OK. We will then make sure our paint bucket is set to white and fill in that section with white. Next, change the layer name to white and hide that layer. Now we have one of the three lighting zones completed. It's time to find those midtones. The midtones will be more in the middle of the slider and should be a majority of the image. Once you hit the sweet spot like I did here, we will create a new layer, go select, color range, click on the white, then OK. We will then fill in that selection with our orange and title that new layer orange. Then hide that layer as well. You might think we are going to repeat this whole process for the shadows, but we are not. For the shadows, we are actually going to just create another new layer, fill it with green, and name it green. When we go back to activate the orange and the white layers, you see we have successfully built a three color screen print of our player. In order to snap that green to the outline of the player, you can simply select the pixels from the cutout, click on your green layer, inverse the selection, and delete the dead pixels. So now you have a free flowing three color screen print that you can put on multiple backgrounds. The framework is down. Let's now talk about real world application. Where does this actually fit within your designs? Just this past season, I used the one color stamp technique to highlight the arenas we played in for our starting five graphics. Super quick to mock up, and it added a different visual element to a heavily repeated graphic. You've also probably noticed a few of the marketing posters popping up throughout this video. Whenever we had a color out, I heavily leaned on this look. If you don't have a deep photo pool for these themes, especially ones with different colors, it's a very easy easy way to build a strong identity around the event. And I'm not the only one using this technique. Literally while working on this video, I saw two use cases that I really liked. BYU hit us with this gritty threshold treatment on a large player in the background, and Wyoming is rocking a one color repeated post stamp at the bottom of their sign graphics. Bottom line, learning threshold isn't the whole recipe. You'll still need texture filters and a clean comp, but this is one of those underrated tricks that when used right, can get you right. Like and subscribe if you learned something from this video. Drop a comment what you plan to use it for. Until next time.